I'm George Shulkoff, and this is Hollister House Garden. I started the garden 33 years ago after I went to England and saw how they garden there. And so I came back home and decided I had to make an English garden. It wasn't so easy. This is a different climate, different conditions. I always think I can make it better. And after 33 years, I'm still hard at it. I like formal structure. I like the framework that it gives for a loose planning style. My planning style, as one can see, is a bit overgrown. And the walls and the hedges and the right angles all serve to give a framework, a structure within which the plants can romp freely and look natural. Without the structure, they might just look overgrown and messy. The reflecting pool is fed by a natural spring, and the fountain runs entirely by gravity. There's no electricity whatsoever. The plantings here are high and exuberant at this time of year, late summer, and in the springtime, it's an entirely different garden. Everything is delicate and tentative and more pristine. Each season has something to recommend it. I like the fullness of late summer, the exuberance, the bigness of the flowers, and especially the phloxes. Phlox is a wonderful way to mass color in a garden. This is my red border, and red is my favorite color, but unfortunately what I call true red, fire engine red, lipstick red, is very rare in the plant world. These are dahlias in this border. This is probably the oldest hybrid dahlia, and it's called the Bishop of Landaff. It has that wonderful bronze foliage, which sets off the flowers so well. And the border is rather loosely planted, and I think the hedges in the background are what really make it work. This is a view across the garden towards the house. I like to include views of the house in the garden. I think there are two ways to treat your house. If you like it, you make it part of the garden, and if you don't, it's important to hide it. I like to see it on an angle. I don't sort of line up anything with the house, but I like it emerging on the diagonal obliquely so that, that one glimpses it, and then you can turn around and look at something else. This is my formal parterre, which we treated in the English manner with the beds having plants inside instead of the continental way of just having gravel or grass, which is more severe and sometimes very elegant, but I like my plants. I situated it on the diagonal because I thought that might be a little more interesting than just lining it up with the house and with the garden below. The nice thing is that from the parterre, you can look down on the rest of the garden and, and there's some real drama 